Myanmar says ownership complies with laws. In response to two moves, complained to the Crime Suppression Division. Caretaker Prime Minister Apisit Wechashiwa yesterday slammed the break on Wong Sak Suwadipanit's snap transfer to Lampoon, coming immediately after he was reinstated as Director General of the Department of Provincial Administration. Thailand will host next year's World Economic Forum East Asia, Thai caretaker Prime Minister Apisit Wechashiwa said Monday. Update the news around the world with Andrew Tang Mi Sang and Patsurang De Sha Putarang Si in ASEAN Newsroom. Good morning and welcome to us in Newsroom. Today is Wednesday, June the 15th of 2011. You're with me, Arawi Tang Mi Sang. And I'm Pasurang De Sha Putarang Si. DTAX Telenor says ownership complies with laws in response to True Move's complaint to the Crime Suppression Division. A new round in a legal dispute between True Move and Total Access Communication or DTAC has erupted following True Move's filing of a complaint yesterday with the Crime Suppression Division against DTAC, alleging that its rival is a foreign owned entity running a business in Thailand in circumvention of the Foreign Business Act. The police said they would examine the details and decide whether there were grounds for prosecution. Norway's Telenor and its local strategic partner, DTAG, both released statements countering the complaint, affirming that Telenor's ownership in DTAG complies with Thai laws and regulations. A source at the Business Development Department of the Commerce Ministry, which is responsible for matters concerning Foreign Business Act, said the department needed time to study details of the complaint. If it were to comment prematurely, it could backfire legally and or affect related parties, it said. A telecom industrialist said he hoped the National Broadcasting Telecommunications Commission would get off the ground soon to grant new spectrum licenses and promote genuine and fair competition in the telecom sector. This would enable the industry to move forward instead of getting bogged down in legal cases such as this. Caretaker Prime Minister Apisit Wechashiwa yesterday slammed the brakes on Wong Saksawatipani's slap snap transfer to Lampoon coming immediately after he was reinstated as Director General of the Department of Provincial Administration. The Interior Ministry had ordered Wong Sak, who was fighting his appointment as Inspector General, to serve as the Governor of Lampoon. Apisit cited a coming royal decree endorsing Wong Sak's return to his previous post for his decision. As a result, the cabinet did not approve the ministry's order regarding Wong Sak's transfer, as well as two related orders, one swapping Department of Provincial Administration Chief Mong Khon Su Rasatja to Wong Sak's post as Inspector General, and the other moving Su Chai Khan Asa from the Department of Community, Community Development to take the post at the DOPA. Apis's decision was reportedly based on a technical reason. The Councils of State had recommended against approving the three orders at the same time, as the first and second have not yet been endorsed by a royal decree, and the third, proposed in the jump the gun style, could be deemed inappropriate. The transfer saga involving Wong Sak originally to the DOPA's top post resulted from a talk of war between the political leadership and senior ministers. Staff. The Interior Ministry is under the supervision of the Pum Zai Thai Party, which wanted its men hating the powerful DOPA, which overlooks all provincial governors to benefit it both before the House dissolution on May the 10th and prior to the July 3rd poll. Kataka Prime Minister Apisit Wechashiwa has denied Cambodia's accusation over the arrest of three spies on espionage charges, saying Cambodian consular officials have been informed on the matter since the day of the arrest. 
Caretaker Prime Minister Apisit Wetashiwa has made a denial following the Cambodian government accusation that Thailand had fabricated the story of three spies, which one of the suspects is a Cambodian national. Apisit stated the Thai Foreign Ministry has issued a statement dismissing Phnom Penh's accusation and that any further information obtained from the investigation would be used in international forums. The Premier argued that it is impossible for Thailand to conspire with any foreigners to make up the case and that Cambodian consular officials have been trying to contact Thai officials since the day of the arrest of its national. So Chad Muhammad, a Thai national, Cambodian aunt Kim Thai and Nguyen Teng Yang from Vietnam were apprehended last Tuesday at a Thai border village in the northeastern province of Sisagate. They were charged for spying on Thai paramilitary bases and bunkers built to shelter Thai villagers in the event of cross-border attacks or shelling. Regarding the possibility of an exchange of prisoners, Apisit say the detainees must face legal action under Thai judicial procedures first and that Cambodia should respect the Thai judicial system. Meanwhile, Chawanon Interako Mansut, secretary to the Thai foreign minister, asserted that the arrest of the three men was neither politically motivated nor had been set up, and that there were sufficient grounds for the arrest. However, he did not say whether Thailand would raise the issue in the International Court of Justice or the meeting of the World Heritage Committee, which is scheduled to be held next week in Paris. The foreign ministry's straight statement released yesterday said the police are investigating the case and will not take legal action if there is no strong evidence. Well, let's see how today's election countdown has to offer. Now we have the analysis by the nation about how the health policies are unhealthy. What is the value of free medical care if there are no personnel to provide it? This election cycle has seen parties focus their health platforms on extending free medical services. The shortage of medical workers is a problem that has been ignored by politicians. The reason is simple. Free or cheap medical services are more attractive than easy to promise. Long-term investment in personnel won't win votes. Many rural state-run hospitals are understaffed. Doctors are resigning due to the heavy workload imposed under government health care. They are also lured away by offers of fatter paychecks from private hospitals in big cities. The Medical Council's recent records show that 39,000 physicians are practicing around the country, but around 10,000 more are needed by the public health care system. The nursing shortage is another issue that has been unmentioned. The country needs approximately 180,000 nurses, but now has only 138,000. To recruit nurses, state hospitals compete among themselves to p offer grants of 60,000 to 160,000 baht to freshman nursing students who sign four-year contracts. But due to the stuff schedule, some gradually drop out to join private hospitals. The party's public health policies do not go beyond putting money into the medical treatment rather than putting prevention and producing per medical personnel, said Dr. Ampon Jindawatana, Secretary General of the National Health Commission. To improve the quality of the medical services over the next four years, the De Democrat Party has proposed a series of measures. These include reducing the gap between the three health care funds, extending Social Security medical benefits to the families of subscribers, and drafting a five-year blueprint for the National Health Security Fund's financial management. The Puatai Party would bring back the 30 baht co-payment plan that the Suwajut Jovanon administration scrapped when they made universal health care free. Medical services would be made available after office hours, but patients would need to pay 300 baht fees. If political parties do not change their direction from medical treatment to health care prevention, the country could face bankruptcy in the near future. A first step could be changing current policies which limit the growth of the civil service. Pong Pon San Samak, Juvavat Sang Pasa, the Nation Analysis for ASEAN TV. We have another analysis report from the Nation. 
Soldiers are not felines trying to interfere with the July 3rd general election. The anxiety surrounding claims that the military will intervene in the ballot is actually an illusion invented by politicians for their own interests. The armed forces has ousted a number of elected governments involving in several power-sharing arrangements and backed military dictators. But soldiers have never intervened in the balloting process. Not a single piece of evidence has been revealed to prove how and why the military might swing votes away from Pua Thai Party. The whisper campaign against the military apparently spread out from the Pua Thai side. It focused on three issues. First, the intimidation on voters via the tax force. Second, an alleged standing order for troops to vote for the Democrats. And third, special power would be invoked to influence the formation of a new coalition government. Even if there was a discreet way to organize a block vote for one party, past elections saw the defeat of several military-backed candidates. That included the late Samak Sun Torawet in military-dominated constituencies such as Bangkok's Dusit District and Khon Ken. In 2008, Politicians voluntarily flocked to the army compound inside the 1st Infantry Regiment to discuss sharing power. The military's alleged special power to form a new government seems overrated. Soldiers had no mandate or moral authority to dictate to politicians. Past military involvement happened because of political consent. Batching the military might gain sympathy votes for Pua Thai. But is it wise to do this when the progress of democracy depending on keeping soldiers in their backwards? It is ironic that when the top brass have been trying to stay in their barracks, politicians want to play up the military card in order to gain an upper hand in the power struggle. Regardless of the winning party, the military leaders will survive and thrive unharmed. If coup cool leaders could successfully make a deal with the People Power Party in 2007, then there is no reason to suspect that the top brass is in danger of being sidelined if Pua Thai wins. Awud Pa Nanon, The Nation Analysis for ASEAN TV.